Okay, hello guys. Uh, today I'm going to show you some basic data analysis of a VO2 max test. So this max test was done on a cycle using a continuous protocol where we were increasing the resistance every one minute uh, by 30 watts. So if you have a look at the data printout here, we got time, ventilation in liters per minute, volume of oxygen in liters per minute, uh, CO2 liters per minute, RER, and then we got the energy exchange, heart rate, and watts. We're not gonna worry about energy yet, uh, so we'll just focus on these guys over here. So the first thing I wanna point out, uh, and this is something that you were warned of to be wary of, is don't just take the last minute. So this is the ventilation, the last minute's data here. So if I just average those out, uh, cancel that, I would actually have incorrect values because somebody forgot to turn the measuring device off at the end of the uh, protocol. So the way you can tell that easily is look at the ventilation. So here we're doing 147 liters per minute, 146 liters per minute, and then 40 liters per minute. So I just cut and copied this in. This actually isn't from the test, but this is what you have to be wary of, that you can't just grab any data at the end there because there may be a couple of data points that are uh, invalid or that you know they've actually taken the mask off and it's still breathing, uh, still analyzing. So from there to there, uh, that stuff's no good. So I can just delete that uh, for now. Then what I'm gonna do, uh, VO2 is very often uh, recorded in a relative measure. So that means that we've made it per kilo of body weight. And the reason we do that often is so that we can compare all different shapes and size athletes. So a bigger athlete might have a uh, volume of oxygen, you know, liters per minute in the, the five liters per minute, and somebody else might have three and a half, four liters per minute. But uh, when we make it relative, the person with the, the lower weight um, and the lower absolute might actually be a more aerobically fit athlete. So we are very interested in, in the, the relative measures. So if I right click up there and press insert, I'll get a new column. So it puts a column to the left. So you always click on the one uh, that you, that you get, that's next to the one you wanna do it in. So I'm gonna go VO2 and brackets. And you gotta remember that this one's gonna be mils uh, per kilo per minute. Okay, close brackets. So this is the first thing we're gonna do. If I, so to make a, uh, an equation start in Excel, I'm gonna press equals and then open the bracket. So I'm gonna pick the cell that the absolute measure is in. So that's the liters per minute. And then to go from uh, liters to milliliters, we need to multiply by a thousand. Oh, I missed the multiplication. So shift and we put a star in for multiplication times a thousand, okay? And then we need to divide by the body weight. And to do that, there's his weight in kilos, 88. So 88 kilos and enter. And that is how we get the, the relative measure. So mils per kilo per minute. Be very wary of your units in this stuff. Then I grab that little square and I scroll it down here to the end, okay? So I've got absolute measures, relative measures right there. So now what we're interested in is our primary criteria. So did he reach a plateau in his VO2 max with an increasing workload? So to do this, uh, I'm gonna write here so we can keep track of what I'm analyzing, final minute, okay. I can't just grab the, the biggest one. We need to average out the last minute. So the workload was increasing per minute. So I'm gonna take a minute here. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll do it the easy way. Go equals uh, average. So you can actually just press AV and then double click average. And then whatever you highlight from then will get averaged. So we've got those last four ones. Close your bracket, press enter. Okay, so the average there We've got uh, 3.59 liters per minute is the what we're thinking might be the VO2 max. 
And then what I can do is drag that across and that'll put that same average in those four boxes there. And we got 40 milliliters per kilo per minute. And whenever you do that drag, if you're a bit worried about what it's done, if you double click it, that's shown me what we've averaged, okay? But make sure that you don't click another button with your mouse, press enter. Otherwise you'll put in other, digit, other uh, cells for it to do equations on. So that's our final minutes averages. Then what we need to do is I'll go second last minute and I'll do the same thing equals average. You can finish typing too if you like and then enter the bracket in yourself. And then if I go one, two, three, four, so if I go to the next four there and average that out, that's the second minute. And I'll pull that across there. So we've got the last minute and the second last minute. And what we're doing is we're gonna determine if we've reached primary criteria with those there. So, uh, VO2 on the absolute, less than 150 milliliters per minute. So we've got less than 150 millimeter increase per minute with an increasing uh, resistance or gradient, okay? So the, the difficulty's gone up, but the oxygen intake hasn't increased at all. So if we have a look at this, all right, and I'll actually do the sum for you so you really know what's going on. But we essentially we wanna know whether the first, what the difference is between the first and the last minute. So if I go equals, open the bracket, this one, subtract this one, close the bracket, we got 0.24. And this is one of those, of those moments that you have to be very careful about your units, okay? So this is in liters per minute, and this is in mils per minute. So it would be 0.15. So that's greater than that, all right? And we'd assume if I drag this across, so this one's the difference between that and that, that we're not gonna reach the criteria there either. So the criteria for the relative was less than 2.1 milliliters per kilo with an increase in intensity or gradient, okay? So we haven't reached primary criteria. So that's when we go and have a look at the secondary criteria. So we need two of these. If we got blood lactate greater than eight, eight millimoles per liter, so our blood lactate post was 15.7, so we've definitely hit that. Our respiratory exchange ratio is greater than 1.15. So we go here, 1.4. So it's greater than that. Heart rate, uh, so our age predicted heart rate is, so that's 220 subtract your age. So we've got a 21 year old at 200 beats per minute. So we definitely hit that uh, within the 10%. And our RPE, it has to be greater than 17 or 18. So. Our RPE here and the final was 18. So via the, the secondary criteria, we could say that we have reached VO2 max. And if you submitted that into research now, they would accept that. But the point of this laboratory was that it's not a great measure, the, the secondary criteria, uh, because it's not really uh, got much to do with our aerobic system besides the heart rate. So we got measures of uh, anaerobic anaerobic capacity really here, like so our, our lactate response and our, um, this is to do with carbon dioxide, so that's lactate buffering. Uh, so we know that we're, we're working really hard and we're, we've switched into the anaerobic system and we're producing all this uh, metabolites and lactate and all that kind of stuff, we know that, but it has, it's not really confirming that that's the most oxygen that we can consume. Uh, the heart rate's very much uh, associated with VO2, because and if you remember, uh, stroke volume is one of the biggest limiting factors of our VO2. But that's why this, this concept of the validation um, uh, protocol has become, it's, it's emerging and, and the reason we're looking at it because if we have a look at this, we've got him to do, so we've sat our, our person on the bike and we've increased the wattage by 10% of their final wattage. And then they have to, to maintain the same work rate. So we're working at 60 RPM. Uh, so he has to maintain that for three minutes. Now we haven't hit three minutes, so he's, he's burned out before that, but if we have a quick look at his, uh, I'll just make that a little bit bigger for you guys. 
is volume of oxygen. So if I go equals average again, so I've typed this on there so you can see I can just put the bracket in myself. Now it's not the great, we don't have a whole heap of data so it's not real exciting to, to average this out but I'll still do the last four. So we've got a minute's worth there. It's ideal if we get three minutes out because then we've got the last, uh, last full minute and we got 3.86 liters per minute. So if you look at that and then our final here, so he's actually up there. So we've got, he's managed to consume more oxygen there in the validation study. So you can see, even though he reached all the second, secondary criteria, uh, we haven't hit VO2 max on the ramp protocol, okay? Um, it's likely that this could be his VO2 max, but we'd have to come in and retest with a, a, like a continuous protocol that will get him maybe there a little bit earlier so that it's not a fatigue-based thing. There's also a little limitation with cycling because it's, it's leg-based um, and very uh, uh, specific. So if he was a cyclist, it might be a little bit more, uh, bit more value for us. But there's definitely been a limitation here. He's fatigued out before he's reached uh, his VO2 maximum. And that may be, if you look at his lactate scores quite high, it could have just literally been leg strength and he's working really hard anaerobically to keep that spinning. So uh, that's essentially it. So the physiology behind it is, in, and you'll have to read some of the articles around it, but the VO2 max should be a ceiling. So no matter what we do, we can't consume any more oxygen than our VO2 max. So here, this is indicating that he's got more aerobic capacity. Uh, I hope that clears it up and makes the graph, the, the basic data analysis a little bit easier for you guys.